Welcome everybody. This is the SharePoint Patterns and Practices webcast, also known as Office 365 Developer Webcast. Today, we're going to talk about how to create a simple SharePoint Framework web part, on, and we're going to use the weather web part at, uh, as an example. Um, it's a relatively simple example, uh, but it's one of those things what typically when you build an intranet or a portal or uh, customizations in SharePoint, that's one of those things when everybody is asking, I want to have a weather shown within my, in the front page of, one front page of my portal. So and it and it's actually a relatively nice a simple scenario to show also the power of SharePoint framework. My name is Osa Yuvonen. I'm a senior program manager in SharePoint engineering, and with me today uh, doing the demo is Waldek Mastercards. Waldek, will you do a quick demo intro? Yes. Hi everybody. My name is Waldek Mastercards. I am Office Development MVP, and I work as a senior developer at Rencore. Today I'll be your JavaScript wizard. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <clears throat> so let's actually get started on the on the actual content. So a few things um, before we deep dive on the content. So SharePoint Patterns and Practices uh, is a initiative uh, which was has been existing for a few years. We've been using the Office Dev Tree, uh, Office 365 Dev uh, as the naming. But right now, when we're pushing more and more SharePoint uh, elements, uh, we especially in the SharePoint topics, we're going to use the SharePoint Patterns and Practices uh, term or a brand. SharePoint Patterns and Practices provides you code samples guidance documentations, monthly community calls, bi-weekly office hours for Q&A, case studies. The themes of us are in the SharePoint framework. More and more will be spent time on the share upcoming SharePoint framework, which is already available in developer preview. Um, also, the SharePoint add-ins will be there as a big role because the add-ins are not going to go away. So the SharePoint framework is going to, yeah, it's an additional option to implement certain scenarios in a UI perspective. But the typical SharePoint add-in scenarios um, are not going to go away, fully supported, uh, and we're going to evolve those in the future as well. The BMP also provides guidance on Microsoft Graph, Office 365 API usage in general, and it's really around the remote provisioning client-side development um, in, in general. But let's actually get moving on the on today's topic. So, um, like mentioned, <coughs> we kind of use the simple scenario of a weather web part, and this is a super super classic case. But that's for a purpose, um, because we do know that a lot of the the audience and a lot of the people watching these videos and going through the tutorials and going through the code examples do not necessarily have that significant experience on the web stack development or SharePoint framework development because it's a relatively new topic within a SharePoint area. So the weather web part is then a good example because actually it's almost like production ready. The typical requirement is that you need to show a weather within a one location. The, the follow-up requirement is then that, okay, let's evolve this based on a user user profile attributes, or for example, reading a user profile location, attribute location, and then evolve the web part to be dynamic. We're not gonna go that far today. Uh, we're gonna start with a typical setup where you configure uh, the web part to show the weather in a certain location, um, which is a, no doubt, uh, a relatively typical use case. Before we go to the actual code, and while this is going to show the basics and how do we actually implement this stuff, there's a few things <clears throat> which we want to pinpoint. So right now we are in the developer preview of the SharePoint framework, and there is actually a native, simple way of adding uh, remote JavaScript uh, libraries to your SharePoint framework uh, solution. In the developer preview, this does not, however, work yet. Um, it is a preview. It is an alpha or beta, depending on your perspective. So we need to do a slightly additional work on this. Uh, we luckily have a module loader um, uh, available within the SharePoint framework, and this is directly taken from our use case. Um, there's two things or few things to, to notice uh, within this render method. So this is the render method in the client-side web part in the SharePoint framework. First of all, uh, there's the if this render once equals false. Um, and this render once is a property within a base class, which you can use to check uh, have we already rendered the web part, so we don't reload uh, those dependencies, which we need to do for the first time. Wouldn't be that the right way of putting that, Waldek? Yes, that's correct. Um, the way the render works is that it executes um, initially when you add the web part to the page, but also every single time you change properties of the web part. So that way, without that clause, we would just load these scripts every single time someone would change location. So we don't want to do that. So that's why we wrap 
uh, the loading part of the script in that if clause. Yes, indeed, indeed. And then we inside of the the if clause, we are using the module loader, which has been imported uh, to the Visual Studio Visual Studio Code uh, project or whatever the, the your UI, whatever your tooling is. So in the SharePoint Framework project or in the class. So you're using the import module loader from Microsoft slash SP module loader. And after that, you're able to then uh, request certain scripts to be loaded in external CDNs or wh whatever the location is. Quite simple stuff still, uh, but after this, you have, uh, in this case, as an example, you have then the jQuery available. You have then also additional uh, uh, simple web weather uh, mini minified JavaScript file available within your implementation. The other thing where, what we wanted to kind of pinpoint explicitly on the slide is, is a, a option uh, within your client-side web part. So by default, when you have a, a property pane properties within your client-side web part, those are reactive. What it means is that whenever you modify the property, the modification is reflected directly uh, to the client-side web part. Essentially, it is actually re-executing the render uh, method within the client-side web part, like Waldeck mentioned. So this isn't always the right behavior, because for example, in this weather web part case, you want to write, for example, the weather of Helsinki or Los Angeles or Montreal. You actually don't want um, the, that the text to be, uh, re, uh, well, you don't want that property change to be reactive, which would mean that when we type Helsinki, every single time you type H-E-L, uh, it would actually re-render the web part. That's not optimal. So what we want to do is that somebody writes the property and then clicks a button to actually apply that. Uh, and to be able to transform the default behavior um, to this uh, on-demand behavior, so to say, um, you actually override uh, a property which is disabled reactive property changes. So you essentially disable the, the reactive property pane uh, uh, behavior and after that, uh, it will actually show you the apply button uh, for the web part. And this is obviously added on a web part class, uh, so you're able to, to modify that case by case within the web part. But let's actually move to the demo itself. So while Doug is going to do the demo, uh, I'm going to ask uh, certain questions and we're going to walk through uh, how to build a typical weather web part, uh, which is, like mentioned, relatively common scenario and a great use case uh, to learn how to, for example, integrate, say, jQuery, and how to implement, uh, well, almost like production-like uh, implementations uh, using the SharePoint Framework uh, Developer Preview. So here you see the source code of our weather web part built using the new SharePoint Framework. As, as I said, the first thing that we do, um, because we want to load jQuery and the jQuery plugin that we use to show the weather from um, external uh, C, 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 CDN, we import the module loader into our class. We do it with the import module loader from Microsoft slash sp module loader. With that, it's, it's available in our class for us to use. The next thing that we do is we load the external scripts from CDN. We do that by calling the load script function that's a par part of the um, module order class. And here, as you can see, we also pass the name of the global variable to which the contents of that script will attach. So we load the contents of the script and attach it to a uh, uh, query, and we do that uh, for the plugin to be able to load, because plugin is not an AMD module, and that's essential thing for you to understand the way these uh, scripts work when you start working with the sh uh, sh uh, sh SharePoint framework. Um, generally, um, scripts are built um, as modules, and that you can think of that as a way of DLLs, right? And you can just embed them. But there are also some scripts that are just scripts, and they will load within uh, uh, within the, in the um, uh, global scope. Um, and that way, for the, these scripts to work, you have to assign them to a uh, an, uh, name, right? Because otherwise, they would they would just add and and framework would, would not know how to register them on a page. 
So here, we create the variable uh, that we use to register h h with, and then we use exactly this, the same name here to actually load the simple weather plugin that we do here. Another thing that we also do is to assign the jQuery to a internal variable that we have here for us to use, right? Because now we only load the script, but at some point we also want to instrument a piece of the page, uh, a tag on the page to actually load the weather, right? So we need to have the reference to it. Um, and after these scripts are loaded on a page, we actually move to rendering the contents. Right? And another thing that we mentioned in slides is that we wrap all of this into this if this render once cl uh, clause. Because the render function uh, is triggered every time, um, initially when you add the web part to the page, but also every single time you change property of the web part. And because we only want to load these scripts once, we we use the internal uh, information that, that the web parts makes available to us to check well, um, um, if it's loaded initially or if it's re-rendering due to a change of uh, uh, one of its um, pro 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 properties. So once all of that is done, we actually move to our internal function that we use to actually uh, show the weather on a page. And here, we make use of our jQuery function or jQuery property um, that we stored internally here, or, or that, 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 that we stored st or, or, or here. So the script that we got from CDN, we assigned to this variable, and now we are able to use jQuery within the web part. And here, the thing that we do is that we get the location from properties, and we initialize the plugin to actually retrieve and show the web part on a page. So the way it works is if we go to the page here, we, we can see the weather. And if we go here, uh, we could change that to Munich and then apply it. And then we would see that, that it will change um, um, the weather info. Um, as you can see, we use the apply button here to have the pro 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 property pane work in a non-reactive mode. That means that it will only show the weather whenever we click, click a, a, apply. Uh, without it, the way it would work, let's just see how it would, would work out of the box. So let's just uncomment this, save it. The workbench will reload by itself because it runs in the background. And let me just open developer tools so that we can see how requests will be done whenever we change it. So now let's clear that and let's change location back to Helsinki and let's just see how as I type for every single keystroke, the web part issues a request. Why? Because as I said, on every single change, the render of Function is being called, the web part is being re-rendered, and location and the weather info is being retrieved for whatever we have there, right? So that's exactly, that case is exactly why you want to have property pane in non-reactive mode whenever you retrieve data from some, some API, right? Because you don't want to re-render it all the time on every key, keystroke or on, or on every change. You want to change uh, the add things to do the way you want them to be, then apply it, and then only have the web part show the data. So with that, I give it back to Vesa. Thank you, Waldek, and let's move back on the presentation. I think this is good coverage on the on the both of the topics which you mentioned in the slides, and obviously there's some technical details on the, on how the jQuery weather uh, uh, modules and all of that work, but that's not really related on the on the SharePoint framework. I think the key point was to cover how do we get those external JavaScripts uh, loaded in the CDN, uh, and also having that how to disable that reactive uh, property pane, uh, which makes a lot of sense um, because this the end user experience experience when you're typing the, the string there it would be horrible when it's refreshing all the time the UI um, and, and the browser would be doing additional calls. But thank you, Waldek, for this one. Uh, let's switch uh, back on the slides and close up the webcast. Thank you. Uh, 
And going back on the slide, so we don't have any, anything more to actually cover within the slide perspective other than just a summary of the of what we went through uh, within the slides and also within the demo. So thank you, Waldek, for joining me. Uh, I think this is a, a great uh, a webcast around the, the how to get started uh, writing this simple web parts. And quite often, actually, especially, well, in my perspective, and I think a lot of people of perspective, keeping things simple is always a good thing. Um, and I personally, I really like this kind of a scenarios as well, that, that they show the simplistic way so that people can actually start learning more complex scenarios. So we don't want to actually deep dive on, on super, super complex and super flashy, even though this is actually a flashy web part. Uh, I, I really like the UI design. But we don't want to really deep dive on the super, super uh, complex scenarios at the moment, because it might be really difficult to actually understand what's happening. So hopefully, this webcast will help you to get started on integrating um, external, uh, external framework and building your own client-side web parts using the SharePoint framework uh, already today. So thank you, Waldek, and we'll come up with a new webcast sooner or later. Thank you. Bye.